All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna talk about an original idea of mine regarding the characteristics of figs. So when we are evaluating particular varieties that we're growing, there's a number of characteristics that we typically look at, right? Things like how vigorous is it? How productive is it? How good does it taste? And there's one particular characteristic that I've been talking about for years that I hope at the end of this video, when you guys fully understand my viewpoint and where I'm coming from, that you will agree is probably one of, if not the most important characteristic when it comes to obtaining a higher fruit quality consistently in humid or short season or cooler climates. Um, and you could also argue that for people in, of course, really hot and dry places like Southern California, West Texas, Arizona, this could also apply to you guys at different times of the year, especially when things cool down. And this particular characteristic that I have uh, really been trying to educate you guys on and kind of spread the uh, word on is called the hang time. And the hang time can be really easily defined in that however many days it takes for the fig to ripen in its final ripening phase to the point in which we will actually pick it off of the tree. So here's a variety here called um, Sister Madeline's Yellow. And you can see it's picked to my liking. In fact, it's been through some rain. It's been through a little bit of damage there on the skin probably not of the highest quality I could pick, although it looks really kind of ugly. But although I know from experience having the soft neck, that honey down there solidifying at the eye, it's probably pretty good. However, if we can have a fig that is pretty much avoiding all of the rain, right? Like if we could throw, let's say a high tunnel over top of all of my fig trees and just cover them all with plastic, wouldn't that be awesome? Because then we're essentially avoiding all the rain. Now, of course, there's another component to that is the humidity. And the humidity is also rather important. And having a drier day, as we learned this year, certainly sucks that water out of the skin and helps dehydrate that, that, that fruit. Uh, with a higher humidity, in fact, the opposite's kind of occurring. And when it rains, definitely the opposite is occurring and that the water instead of being sucked out of the skin and out of the fruit is actually being put into the fruit because the skin can act like a sponge or it can act like a waterproof jacket every variety is rather different and of course you can have anything in between the two right and most varieties are not like a waterproof jacket where the water you know hits the the skin of the fig and then slides right off uh a lot of these act like a sponge and that's really where we struggle the most with our figs is having a fig that doesn't have the greatest skin quality to it um, so we struggle with that and we have lower quality because of that rain and that moisture and that humidity that we we often see here for the majority of us actually in the united mm -hmm. states um, now when we're figs are in this green and hard stage here, they haven't entered into that final ripening stage just yet. And they're mostly indestructible. In fact, I would argue that this fig over here, although it has begun the swelling process, it's entered into that final ripening stage. It still is rather indestructible. If you feel the bottom of the fruit, it's not that soft, really soft at all just yet. And of course it has started to swell. It's gotten larger. The color of the fig has changed. Uh, it's becoming softer down here at the bottom. This one here actually, I would argue, is indeed susceptible to the rain or damage from a critter, damage from ants, slugs, squirrels, birds, uh, but particularly the rain because the fruit is now becoming soft. And when the fruits become soft like this, Again, they can be highly subjected through their skin, uh, the moisture that's in the air, and of course, the, the rainfall. So this is what I like to do with the hang time, is I like to count the number of days before I actually pick the fig. So 
if we have a fig like this that's now finally in the beginning there of the hang time, it's in that susceptibility window. And this is another way we can think about this, right? Is how many days within the ripening process, that final swelling process, is the fig actually susceptible uh, to adverse events? And so this is now officially in day one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back out here tomorrow. I'm gonna come out here the next day, the next day, the day after that. And I'm gonna count the number of days every single day until I pick it into the point in which it's somewhat like this. And that I'm satisfied with the ripeness level to fully enjoy the fruit. And everybody has a different ripeness level that they prefer. I will argue though, to the end of the earth that typically the more ripe it is the better it is um so definitely try to let your figs hang on the tree a bit longer but this is kind of the message of the video is that this fig and any fig on our trees has a window of susceptibility to the rain uh to adverse events happening and if we have a fig that has a shorter window to it, shorter susceptibility window, we're gonna see more success ripening higher quality fruits more consistently. And this fig over here is my little ruby tree. And actually I have one here ripening. And this is a fig I've described in the past that I would say does not have any of the good characteristics that we look for in a humid climate. Um, it doesn't have the right shape. You can see that the shape is rather flat and it kind of enables the fig actually to be pointed towards the sky the eye is now upwards and because the eye is upwards the rain can hit the eye the most susceptible part of the fruit right the figs are ripening from the bottom up so the bottom is always going to be more ripe and more susceptible than the neck and if the bottom of the fig the eye is getting hit by that rain it's going to be fast absorption of water into the skin and causing it to split and that's typically the most common reason we see for splitting but also this fig actually has an open eye and so the rain can just get right into the center of the fruit and start to ferment it and spoil it we also have ants and different things that can get into the the eye of the fruit um, so the fig doesn't hang correctly it has the wrong shape um, and also the skin believe it or not as i've observed is not really that that of much like a celeste or a fig that has like a waterproof jacket in fact it almost is kind of like a sponge and most of the water gets absorbed into the fruit so how is it though that i'm able to grow this particular fig and ripen i mean this year i've ripened probably close to 200 really well ripened figs and we've had a lot of rain recently in fact i just picked a really nice little ruby fig today this one I'll probably pick in a day or two from now. Um, and that particular fig that I picked today completely avoided all the rain that we recently had. Well, because I was able to come in here and pick all the little ruby figs that were close to ripe or close to my liking before the rain came in. And then after the rain came in, very shortly after that, the figs that were not really susceptible to that rain at the current moment, like this fig here wasn't susceptible when it rained. But now it's ripening after the rain because, and it's ripening rather quickly because the hang time or the susceptibility window on this particular variety is really short. So this fig, even though it has all the wrong characteristics, every single thing that I can think of and all the knowledge I've gained over the years about these different fig varieties, growing them in this climate, trying to, you know, grow all the different varieties, learn as much as I can, it just doesn't have any of the good qualities that we look for other than a short hang time. And believe it or not, because it has that short hang time, I would say it's one of the most reliably and high, highest consistently, <laughs> the highest quality and consistently ripened figs that I have in my collection. So to me, that's, you know, really getting some higher points, really a special fig for that reason, because typically the one that is of the highest quality 
or the most ripe, I should say the most ripe at the highest quality will be the best tasting fig. Um, so you can really easily understand at this point now why it is that I am so obsessed with this particular characteristic of, of figs. And it's all different depending on the variety. Each one of them is rather different. So as an example, the Sister Madeline's Yellow is susceptible on the tree for about six or so days. Whereas the little ruby is susceptible on the tree to adverse events for about only two or three days. I've had some other figs this year that really impressed me, like uh, the one, which is a, a celeste fig that ripens rather quickly. It's really a one to three day susceptibility window. I have another one that was new to me this year called Rissoulette that ripened in a two or three day susceptibility window. Um, Historically, my Verdino del Nord from Vladimir Rocco has been really good with the hang time. Same thing with Neruccio de Elba. Same thing with Iranian Candy and De La Senora Hivernenka. And most of the figs that I love, like Smith has a three or four day window, depending on the time of the year, that it is susceptible to adverse events. So that's my thing here, guys, is that... Um, it really does also depend not only on the variety itself, but also the weather, the heat, the temperatures that you guys have while these figs are ripening. So if you have really warm conditions out here, even just a microclimate where your figs are, it's going to go a long way because you're going to have a higher metabolism on your trees for longer. And the metabolism of the trees really starts at the soil level. So the warmer the soil is, about 78 degrees Fahrenheit, that's what we want to achieve the right metabolism. And typically though, we could just kind of really estimate this. And, and typically if it's in the 90s during the day, the 70s at night, we're gonna have really high metabolisms on our figs and they're gonna ripen real quick. And the susceptibility window is gonna be a lot shorter. The hang time is gonna be a lot shorter. So. Um, the same thing can be said though, it, the opposite's true when it's cooler outside. So as the temperatures start to get down to 80 during the day and 60 at night or even lower than that, well, the hang time and the susceptibility windows increase and we have a longer period of time that the figs have to hang and ripen on, of our, on our trees. So it could be a pretty wild difference between, you know, now it's September it's a pretty wild difference between September and August. And then it's even crazier of a difference between now and let's say November or at the end of October, uh, even a month from now, things are gonna get really cool really quickly. And uh, instead of having maybe a two or three day hang time or susceptibility window, that could be very easily increased to six or seven. Some of these figs that the average I would say is about a six or seven day hang time or maybe a six day window of susceptibility on the tree. That then goes to like 10 days or maybe even slightly longer. And so you have to really, I think, consider this particular characteristic when you're growing this, growing these figs in, in adverse climates. Um, I really do appreciate you guys getting this far and listening and uh, learning about this because I do believe that it's of the utmost importance and I think that if you guys are evaluating these figs you're making judgments on them uh, and you're not including something like the hang time here in your report or in your evaluations you're just doing it wrong this is something that everybody should be paying attention to um, it's really critical and you know what, you can make the argument it's not so critical for those in those really, really warm places because their hang time is, is like that, right? Their, their suscepti susceptibility window is extremely short. So they don't necessarily have to worry about all that. But for those of us that really, we are in these cooler places, these, these more humid places, uh, you, you're doing the community in a way a disservice because this is such an incredible important characteristic that we all should pay more attention to so that's all this video is really meant for um to explain that and then try to promote you guys to document 
this particular characteristic. So when you're doing these reviews, when you're talking about these varieties, talk about the hang time and talk about the, the quality of the skin. Um, I thank you guys for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. And we will see you guys soon, all right? Take care.